Okay, so this is the Miano. I'm going to shut it down and start it up and uh, talk through how that, that works. So I'm going to get the power off here. I'm going to go uh, turn the power cover off in the back of the machine. So the, the one problem with this machine is that when it sets for a day or several days now, uh, it used to be several weeks, and then when you go to start it up, the servo drive wouldn't kick in, but that's, uh, when it's uh, been running, uh, it's no problem. It just starts back up. I just turned on the main power. In the back of the machine, I just turned on the main power. And I'm going to press this on button here. And what will happen is you'll see uh, on the screen here, it'll say, Alarm 051 servo power not supplied, and then that message clears and it's ready to home. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to zero return here on this selector switch. I'm in manual on this selector switch. I'm going to put it in the Z axis here with the Z axis selector switch, and then I'm going to press the job plus button, and the Z axis will move to its home position. When it gets to its home position, the Z-axis uh, light will come on as being home. Then I'm going to go to the Y-axis, and I'm going to press the Jog Plus button, and the Y-axis will move to its home position. When it gets there, the Y-axis home position light will come on. Now I'm going to turn the selector switch to X, and I'm going to press the uh, Jog Plus button, and the X-axis will move to its home position. At that point, all three axis lights are on here as being homed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in manual now. There's a manual selector switch that's already there. I'm going to turn the manual mode switch to X100. And since I'm in the X axis right now with this selector switch, when I turn the jog wheel, actually I'm going to go to the, I'm going to see the position here by going to pressing the POS button or the position button on the inner side. Uh, XYZ position. I'm going to hit the page down button here to get to the position axis screen, which is all zeros right now because we just homed it. And now I'm going to, with the, uh, the jog wheel here, I'm going to move in the minus direction the X axis back around halfway of its travel, which is, uh, it's uh, got 20 inches of X travel, so I'm going to move it to around 10 inches here with the hand wheel. So there's 10 inches there in the X axis. Now I'm going to uh, move the Y axis about halfway in its travel. It has 12 inches of travel, so I'm going to move it about 6 inches in the minus direction. And then I'm going to move the uh, Z axis in the halfway into its travel, which has eight inches of travel. I'm going to move it about four inches down. So I'm going to go to the Z axis with the selector switch and use the uh, MDI jog wheel here to move it down four inches. Um, so the machine now, if we would uh, select a program, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the program selector switch here. Uh, auto, I'm going to press the alarm button here, and I'm going to do the page down. You can see a directory of the programs that are available. If you keep hitting that, you can actually see how much memory is left in the controller. But from the directory screen, I could, I could select a program that I want. I see Maybe a program 0045 that I want. If I go to the auto, I go to the program screen with the pro program button right here. I can type in the program number that I want, 0045 with the down cursor button. And it loads that into the memory. And now if I go to auto, 
with the selector switch. If I press the cycle start button, it'll start running that program. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And what it's doing is it's starting, it's running that program. And there's uh, no parts in the fixture right now, but it's, it's running the program. And on the screen here, you can see as it's running, the program's running. I'm going to crank up the, uh, the rapid travel here so you can see how fast it moves in rapid. It's quite quick. And it's a drill and tap machine, but it does light milling. Like in this case, we normally are milling the face off an aluminum part in these 5C collet fixtures with a milling cutter. And uh, it does light milling and aluminum just fine. Uh, it does engraving great. Uh, but really, it's a drill and tap machine, so it can push uh, large uh, you know, drills. Here we're doing a tool change. And right now, if I want to override the feed rate, I'm going to go to the fastest feed rate we can here. So it's 150% uh, of the, the feed program feed rate here. So we're pushing that drill a little faster. Um, like and when we're running that, if we want to uh, see the parameters of what we're running on, we can go to the COM screen here and it actually shows you things like your uh, feed rate. Your RPMs are here, it's running at 1500 RPM. Uh, your feed rate is, uh, it says 50, which, which in this program uh, thing means five inches per minute. Um, it shows you other things like your uh, work coordinate systems and uh, what program you're running, etc. We're about to do another tool change. It does have a coolant tank on it and uh, got uh, two coolant lines here and they're on the head. So they travel with the head and which is nice so you can adjust them so that uh, as the tool moves up and down the coolant lines stay with them. Uh, there's supposed to be a drill in here but it's not in, in the machine right now. Wow, I need to fasten that vise down when it's tr in rapid that, that fast. I'll turn the rapid travel down a little because that vice not not fastened down. Like I'm flying off the table. There we go. So it just finished running a whole program. So that's kind of how it's supposed to work and how it does once it's been uh, hasn't been sitting around for days and days. <laughs> 